One of the nice things we, we have here at Penn is that when research scientists are finished with their equipment, we get to put it into our demonstration lab. So we've got a great high voltage power supply and cathode ray tube, and we can take a look at the way electrons move through space. The cathode ray tube is a glass envelope. On one end of it, you can see the metallic electron gun. At the other end, we've got a grid. And that grid is on a piece of cardboard with phosphors on it. When the electrons hit those phosphors, they'll glow blue. The blue glow tells us where they are and how they're behaving as we change the situation inside the tube. The power supply is, again, a very nice old research high voltage supply. We're going to be using 3,000 volts to make these electrons move through our cathode ray tube. The word cathode means negative, and so we're going to apply negative electricity to the starting point. And the positive side will be connected to the other side of the cathode ray tube. And so the negative charges will be attracted across the tube. The first thing we're going to do is hook this thing up backwards. If we put the knob on negative, that means that the receiving end of the tube is negative, which leaves the sending end positive. That would be an anode ray tube. And when we turn it on, we notice there are no anode rays. The metal electrode that was so willing to give off negative charges, electrons, refuses to give off positive charges. Only the electrons in a metal wire are mobile and can be driven off it. And so now we'll go back to the normal function of the cathode ray tube by setting the power supply to positive which is to say that the starting point of the tube is negative and the attracting end is positive. When we turn that on, we see that the electrons are hitting the car. They're traveling in a nice straight line, not surprising because electrons follow Newton's first law. If there are no forces on the electrons, they move in a straight line. So we're going to apply some force. And the first force we can apply is electrical. In our cathode ray tube, there's a metal plate above and below the card. We're gonna put a negative charge on the bottom plate, which we know will repel the negative electrons, and a positive charge on the top plate, which will attract them. Those charges are in addition to the 3,000 volts that's driving the electrons across the tube in the first place. And when we do that, our previously straight path becomes curved. It curves up, moving away from the negative and toward the positive. When we disconnect it, because there's no air inside the tube, it takes a long time for the electricity to dissipate, and slowly the beam returns to the straight line path as the charge we put on those two metal plates slowly leaks off into the air through the terminals. A second way to add a force is with a magnet. So we've got a powerful bar magnet, and we're gonna bring that bar magnet in at the end of the tube opposite to the electron gun. So the magnetic field lines are gonna be parallel with the velocity of the electrons. When we do that, one thought might be that it would either repel or attract the electrons, but they don't stop. The beam remains unaffected, not a very interesting behavior. But if we simply move around to the side so that the magnet is at right angles to the path of the electrons, we find a very interesting behavior. We find that the electrons are still not attracted or repelled by the magnet, but rather begin moving in a third dimension. And depending on which pole of the magnet we point, it moves up or down. This is something that we can't flatten into two dimensions. The behaviors are three-dimensional. By three dimensions, I mean that we've basically got a graph axis with X, Y, and Z. If we turn it around, we find that if the electrons are moving here and the magnetic field comes in from the other side, we end up with the effect reversed and the curvature is down. The rule that summarizes behaviors like this is called the right-hand rule because our right hand can be arrayed in three dimensions. Our thumb, our index finger, and our ring finger can be set up to look kind of like my diagram. 
Magnetic forces follow a pattern set up by your right hand. Applying that rule to the magnetic field and the electron velocity gives a vector pointing downward. But the negative charge on the electrons reverses this arrow, predicting an upward force. If we reverse any one of them, we can figure out where it goes. Now, finally, we're going to apply both electric and magnetic fields. And if we do that, we can actually get the electric and magnetic forces to cancel each other. The ability of the magnetic field to change the direction of the beam has to do with the velocity of the charge. And so if we get the two of them to cancel, it's because we have exactly the right momentum in the particle.